Welcome back. Today is the big day. Finally going to start up the Forester. I got a friend who's on the way over, so I've got an extra set of eyes and ears to look for leaks or anything that's out of the ordinary. He's very familiar with uh, Subarus. He's actually rebuilt a Forester. Um, he's uh, got a six-speed swap in his Forester, and uh, I believe he even said he runs meth in it. Um, the the methanol injection thing uh, so Jeff's gonna be on his way over here we're going to get this thing fired up get the coolant bled and uh, check for any leaks get that first oil change done and uh, take a look for any metal metal particles in that and uh, go from there right now I have got uh, you see down there on the floor I've got a battery charger hooked up to it so that way I can just make sure that that battery's up I mean it has been sitting for close to a month um, doing this rebuild but uh, finally gonna get to it so uh, we're gonna be right back getting it fired up okay so I have loaded the new tune I have five quarts of oil in there I've brought the coolant up but I'm going to it says it needs to be bled yet. Okay. So I'm gonna set that up. I'm gonna check the oil again real quick. And it's just above the full mark, which I would expect considering mm. it hasn't been circulated. I put it, oh yeah, that's it. I put in a new AEM fuel pump. Okay. And I left that unplugged. Yeah. It's gonna give me a check engine light because sure. it's not reading the fuel pickup. Yeah. But it's not gonna pressurize the system exactly. so I can crank it yep. without it starting. That's good. So I should be good there. Hey, um, did you, uh, that pump, that uh, fuel pump, Yeah. did you notice that on the outlet of the fuel pump, it doesn't have a very big barb? It doesn't, but it was the uh, stock one that I took off, aside from the color of the housing, um, it was You're right. not much Same longer. Thing, right. It was, it was well, almost crazy. identical. Yeah. In well, fact, I took the, the the factory harness and it plugs right in. Oh yeah, it. it did. Perfect. I didn't have to uh, cut and or yep. swap connectors yep. or anything. And the little connector for the pump on the um, hanger was perfect too. Was, yeah, everything fit perfectly in there. It's like it was yeah. a stock yeah. body just with new. And so what clamp did you use to to clamp that? This, Everything that, that was that was with the kit, right? The little no. Uh, I actually I bought it used. I got it cool. Um, and but it was just literally just dropped right in place. Yeah. The only thing I had to do is the uh, sock for it. Yeah. I had to order one because it's, it's a little bit longer. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't get it from the Subaru dealership without buying the whole pump. Right. So I found one through Delphi, and yeah. it was identical. The clamp that you used on the outlet to the hose, <clears throat> did you use a normal hose clamp? No, nope. like um, uh, this? I, I use the no, nope, I use the spring clamp that was already on. Really? Yeah. I just slid it up, pulled the pump out. Okay. Is that what it had a spring clamp on? Yeah. Okay. Well, I blew mine off. So if you ever lose fuel pressure, <laughs> I blew so, it off up at uh, Summer Snowdrift because I put that pump in that same AEM pump in my Forester. And I was up there, you know, cruising around with my buddy. It had been on there for, I don't know, I used the hose that came with it and everything. I had probably been on there three months. And I got on it. Well, no here's fuel. the funny thing is when I pulled that fuel pump out of there, yeah. the spring clamp wasn't even down over the hose bar. But they, both of them were pushed all the way to the top. Really? So it wasn't even on there. Ah, so it so been, I'm wondering it? if it's been like that for 14 yeah. years since yeah. this thing was built. It's I funny. guarantee you that's all original. Yeah. See, mine, it blew the hose right off of it. And, of course, that pump is a lot higher flow. Right. So if you ever have, a, you know, an occasion to take it apart, I use fuel injector clamps, you know, yeah. because they're, you know, this kind of thing. Because right. I figured it would be better. And I, I was angry. I wrote them an email and said, hey, guys, what's going on, man? There's no barbs on this. Oh, you don't need to worry about it. Well, I just blew mine off, you know, and I used the hose and all the clamps that came with your kit. I, what did I do with my funnel? <laughs> Oh yeah, and I did the TGV deletes on it too. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, uh, so which ones did you get? Those are actually the stock ones. Oh, um, I found I found an identical Forester in a junkyard a few years ago when I took the whole intake off. Okay. It. I gutted them, um, took them to a machine shop I call work, yeah. uh, and <laughs> um, just ran down through there, milled out everything from the inside. Okay. Uh, you need something you need to fill it. 
poured it, polished it. Yeah, that's just JB Weld. Okay. That's what a lot of people said. Yeah, was JB Weld. Yeah, that's what I had. That's what I got in mind too. And then I powder coated. Not nearly as nice as that though. Mine's like all. You know, they're, they didn't make it nice and flush, it's all just JB Weld. And I, I actually machined all that off, too. It's a whole front flange on there mm -hmm. and all the stuff that stuck out. Oh, that's good. Um, and then after I finished with all that, Max said, oh, well, I have a set of STI, the stock ones, the deletes. I'm like, well, hmm. I'm too late now. Yeah, they're not selling those anymore no. because of the emissions, I guess. I've got a set of really nice ones from that Avante or whatever company. Yep. And uh, they have O-rings to seal the bottom. And I was going to put them on the STI, but then I realized my STI had the, um, you know, the injector side to top feed conversion. And those deletes I bought were not for those that my injectors wouldn't fit. So I had it all on there ready to, I'm trying to get the injectors to fit. It's like, wait a minute, something's messed up here. When I found out it was those tumblers were for... Uh, you know, it, they were four top feeds already, right. and not side feeds. So I've got them sitting there, and I wonder if they work on my Forester. I, they won't because I know the Forester <laughs> side feed. But what if I bought top feed injectors? Well, so now the bottom of it should be the same. It's the top of the injector that, and your fuel rails that determine whether that's it's the top or a side the feed. Fuel rail wouldn't it wouldn't. Right. That's what. And if you still up. have the stock fuel rails on, yours is an O it's an O four. So you should have top feeds on that. The old four. The stock fuel rail should have been the top feed. On the on the Forester? Yeah. Is that really? top feed. And yours is an SG. Mine's an 04 though. What? This is an 06. Yeah. So they're still I mean this, this is the first top. year of the yeah, these are top feeds. Okay. I think um, mine's got sides. On, uh, on, the, on my Forester, but I want to convert it and I don't have the injectors, so I was thinking, well, if I buy, okay, I'd have to buy um, top feed um, fuel rails, right. kind of stock, not, not ones for an 04, probably maybe for like an 06. Yeah. Or and just go with some aftermarket ones yeah. and do your own fuel line. Right, that's what I got. Because you, you do meth injection on that too, I right? do, yeah. But that doesn't run through the same fuel no. lines. No. Uh, okay, so it yeah. shouldn't affect those. So, so I think I could do it. The only thing is that the um, spacing for the, for the two bolts right in the center there is different. But on those uh, Avanti thingies, they've got a little block in there with two set screws and you yeah. can move it. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure those would work. So I didn't send them back to Alfred and I still got them. So when I, uh, and I really do need to change the injectors because one or several are leaking. Right. And it's like, it fries my wide band it sensors immediately almost. I put a brand new sensor in there and I'll run it for you know, a month and all of a sudden I'll get an E8 failure. And I mean, I've eaten up sensors on two different versions of the um, Innovate wide bands. And also, sometimes I'll notice it, on the stock um, sensor, oxygen sensor, it'll, it'll go into a funk too, and it'll switch over to speed density, and it'll, it'll, it'll wait a while and have to recalibrate itself, because I think it's just flooding it. I think it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know one of those injectors just every so often is just puking gas, raw gas, into the cylinder, or into, into the engine, burn super rich and that takes out the wide band. Yeah. I yeah. think. Um, That's my theory. I've, I've got a uh, whole extra wideband set up for a Pro Sport. I like the way it worked, yeah. but the Pro Sport gauges are so bright and you can't dim them. Okay, bright plus they're hard to see in the sun, I thought. They're the, like they get the smoke, the smoke front. Yeah, actually I didn't have any issues seeing them in the sun. Maybe so they, they would have, they're, not, they're not what's in this, no. They're right. pulled out. But it was with the same pod? Yeah. Wow, I'm surprised you could see them because I could not. I was so, I, I had all pro sports and all my vehicles. And then I just said, you know, this is crazy. You well, can't see them good in, in the deaf eyes. I mean, those things, you are so beautiful. Yeah. So I switched everything. So I, I got the, the green ones because all my gauges were green. Okay. And the green is what was really bright. Oh, no and so when it's not. night, when you've got your lights on, you want the green, but it was too yeah. bright. So I left it as the white. So it's, yeah. But then during the day, when I shut them off, I could have it come yeah. to the green. And it's like, well, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. And then I got these other ones. You know. Yeah, there are lots so of it. Just right. check the oil. Okay. Got yeah, my check. Go ahead. I'll quit talking. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, I, when I'm doing this, I don't want somebody talking to me. No, so no. That's, that's, that's why I've got the whole check. <laughs> well, that's good. 
<laughs> but I, yeah, I'm funny when I start mine. Um, and I did check the transmission fluid just a little bit ago yeah. before I put the intercooler back on. Yeah. So I am ready to crank it. My fuel pump, I'm going to double check, make sure it's disconnected. <clears throat> and it's unplugged. So, uh, and that cardboard that's underneath there, those yeah. oil spots were already there. Oh, okay, there. good. And you got a good light, so you're good there. All right. and you're just going to crank it now. Yeah, so. just cranking it. Yeah. Yeah, and my cruise light's flashing because the fuel oh, yeah. is disconnected. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, but, I do the uh, same thing. That should have pulled my oil pressure up, and I'm just going to yeah. check this one more time. I've got check engine oil on that so many times. Okay. Yeah. Did um, yeah when I do my mine like this, I do it without plugs, and I wait, I crank it 20 seconds at a time till I get oil pressure. The I know light goes off first because I've got uh, I've got the Pro Sport one or the. The Duffy one hooked up yeah. right up here, oh, that's good. and then I've got another one that's just shoved yep. down on the floorboard, hooked up in the back. That's and when I get pressure in the yes. back, I know it's already going exactly. through the turbo. Yeah, yeah. And they both popped up. Oh, that they did already. Yeah, good. And yeah. this engine's, I mean, it's a it's an engine that had been running. It's not like a brand new build. It's a brand new block. Oh, it is fresh from Subaru. Yes. Oh, no. The kidding. only thing, it, well, the block is all new. Okay. The heads were rebuilt. Okay. They were they were cleaned, resurfaced, all that good stuff. Oh. Vacuum checked to make sure that they sealed properly and yeah. everything's good on that. Ah. Um, this is the original intake manifold. These TGVs came off of a different manifold, but it was still an 06 XT, okay. so they're identical to ah. what would have been on there, yeah. except that they've been gutted, ported, and polished. Yeah. So it was dry, and now just that quick you got pressure? Oh yeah. I never do. It takes me like oh. four or five times a crank oh. and to finally get it. Um, and one other thing I should mention before I do actually start it, I spill oil oh, off the back okay. of the turbo, <laughs> and it's so probably it's on the up yeah. pipe, which yeah. is wrapped. So uh, if it smokes, oh yeah, you'll know that's it. <laughs> and, but we'll look for oil coming out of other places. I'm gonna plug this in now. All right. Right now, priming the fuel system. So hoping I don't have injector leaks. Oh. <laughs> Of course, if I did, you'd see fuel puking out the bottom right now. Probably, yeah. Um, That's the other reason I do mine with the plugs I out. Did a, I did an H6 about two years ago, and I know more than turn the key. He's like, fuel it! Ah! Yeah, yeah. It's scary when that happens. So, get my access port to pop on. It's got my gate. I didn't see anything, didn't nope. smell anything. Spilt some out of here. It looks like it's right down here. It's not that cool. Yeah. Too. So I started it up. You heard that. Uh, I let it run for 20 minutes. Just now shut it off. I have a minor exhaust leak, nothing major. 
Uh, the power steering leak, that was a line that was loose, got that taken care of. Um, so now I just got to wait for it to cool down. We're going to drain the oil out and check it. Uh, and I will show you that when I drain the oil. We'll look for any metal particles. And then we're going to fill it back up with break-in oil. So stay tuned. I'm going to be so, right back. So we're going to take a look here at the oil. I'm going to try. I don't know if you can see. I'm not sure if I can even see it. But uh, there's a few little metal particles. That's to be expected because it is a brand new block. Um, but it's really not too bad. Hoping you can see it. Um, all right, so I have drained the oil. I just showed you what that looked like. Hopefully you could pick out the metal, metal particles in it. There wasn't a whole lot. So I'm going to do my oil change. We're going to some Motul 1040 break-in oil. Um, I've got 10 quarts of this because I'm going to run it for 50 miles, drain it, run it for 500 miles, and then go to a standard synthetic from Motul. Uh, and what I am using, there's the oil filter. I hope you can read that. It is N3R1-14-302. And this oil filter is not a Subaru oil filter. It's actually... A Mazda oil filter. I'm going to drop links down in the description to uh, the break-in oil plus these oil filters. They are a direct fit. Um, they are, let me open this up. Not only are they made in Japan, let's see if it says right on there. Yeah. So hopefully you can get that where it says Tokyo Roki. Uh, so this is what the original oil filters would have been. Can't get them in the U.S. anymore without spending an arm and a leg to get them. So uh, this is what I use. I just order them from the Mazda dealership or on Amazon. Uh, so this is going on there. The break-in oil is going in. When it cools down, I'm going to pull my coolant fill apparatus off of there because I've got the coolant bled. I just want it to cool down so it'll pull the coolant down into it. And uh, I also want to point out this funnel. I love this thing. Screws right into the oil fill and does not leak. Uh, I will drop a link in the description for this as well because I love this thing. I think anybody who owns a Subaru, for as much as we're doing oil on these, needs to have one of these funnels. And uh, I'm also going to note that this break-in oil, it's a mineral oil, it smells bad.